Okay, I'll call this meeting to order. And the first item on the agenda is to reorganize our committee. Um, I'll start by asking if any of the other two at-large members would like to be chair. I think you're doing a fine job. Doing a fine job. <laughs> I would agree with that. <laughs> I'm fine with you staying on if you're willing to stay on and if assuming there isn't a reason why oh. it has to move. Okay, well I'll then I will ask if someone wants to make a motion. I am happy to make a motion that Keith continues to chair this committee. And I second it. All right, I see it's just right. coming in. Uh, sorry for that. I just ran from the classroom. I was a couple minutes late. Joyce, we have gotten as far as I have a motion made by Susan and seconded by Betty to reorganize and appoint or nominate me as the chair. Oh, okay. So if there's no other discussion, we'll do a roll call. Discussion. I'll start with Susan. Yes. Betty. Yes. Yes. And Joyce? Aye, yes. And I'll abstain, but that is, is unanimous or carried. Okay, the next item is um, to review the minutes from our last meeting. Does anybody have any comments on those? It was a million years ago. Yeah. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um. I, so, uh, I would make a motion to um, approve the minutes from the April 6th meeting as written. I second. Okay. I second. have a motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? If not, I'll roll call. Susan? Yes. Betty? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Yes. And myself? Yes. So that's unanimous. Next item, getting right into um, discussion on the wages and salaries of the comparable communities. Um, I do know that we don't have everything that we normally have, but I feel at this point, let's probably ask Brian to, to intervene here. Uh, can, can everybody hear me? Can, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Keith's right. Um, despite Amy asking since November, uh, we haven't heard back from uh, Hatfield. We haven't heard back from Hinsdale. And we got really what I would call a partial response from West Hampton. Um, so I don't really wanna look at comparisons yet. Um, I mean, Amy's been, Amy's been, I ask her every week and she's making every week. calls and she's emailing. Um, and the people are not just, they're just not sending me information. Not sending me information. Um, it, it did kind of occur to me that we, I guess we could do a, I mean, if we wanted to, we could do a freedom of information act every year. Um, but you would think just sort of, you know, collaboration would, would, would rule the day, but, um, it, it doesn't, I think people are short staffed and I know some of the towns have, you know, the positions are like 12 hours. Um, um, so I get it, but at the same point in time, it, it prevents us from, you know, it, it hinders it, us it from hinders doing, us from doing work. work. So, um, so hopefully she will have, um, hopefully Amy will have those from whenever we schedule the next meeting and we can look at the, the comparisons, but I think we should sort of talk and question whether uh, the current way we're doing current, it and the current towns yeah. that we have, are, are we getting information that that's, are we getting the information that we want? Um, are we getting solid comparisons? Um, in some cases we can't get the information. So it, it kind of, it kind of answers the question. Um, so in, in the past, one of the things that, that was helpful was, that was helpful was when Hampshire Cog existed before it, Folded, they would do a they would do a 
um, a Hampshire County uh, salary survey. And so we would, we could pick up Hatfield, we could pick up, you know, a couple of the other towns without having to really ask around and have people do extra work. Now that's obviously gone away. Um, so what we have now that's reliable on an annual basis is the FERCOG, you know, the FERCOG salary survey. Uh, and I had shared that with everybody. Um, but we don't, but that's outside of our, not all of the, our 10 comparable communities are, are from that are survey, from obviously. survey, obviously. So that's the struggles that we have. We're, we're putting in a lot of time. We're, we're chasing, you know, a lot of yeah, these well, towns to get us the information. And it, it just doesn't feel very efficient. Um, with, with how it's set up now, we can continue to do it and we could, we could you know, do the best job that we can. Um, but this has just sort of been something that's just kind of building. And then each year we sort of, we look at these positions and we don't have, you know, we talk about not great comps for water superintendent for, um, what's the other one? I think it's treasure collector because some of them are split. We don't have a lot of, you know, comparisons for different positions. We may have, you know, two or three that we feel are, are somewhat comparable. Um, um, so I'm not really sure how to move forward with it. I, I don't think the answer is, you know, go to the Collins Center every three years and ask him to do a wage and salary survey. Um, because again, we're, we would be changing. We tried to create some consistency with our comparisons by choosing those 10 towns. Because if each year we did, you know, these number of towns and, you know, five years later we did these towns and then it, there's no consistency. There's no continuity there. And we're going to get really, it's going to put, it's going to make the results a little bit more arbitrary depending on the towns that, that we're looking at. Um, I'm not suggesting that, that, that we change something for this year, but I think moving forward, I think we it would, it would help to look at how we make those comparisons. And then we all, and this will be part of my, my complaining tonight, because I feel like I need to complain, but um, get it out. <laughs> you know, get we, it out. Get it out. That's what we're here. For. We're here for you, Brian. We go to the and and Joyce, you, you hear it too. We go to the finance committee and they say, oh, those towns aren't comparable, depending on you know what the you know what the results of the survey say. It doesn't matter saying. what the towns are. You're right. They just say it's not comparable. It, it's true. Um, but it's, and it's. It, I like that we tried to like have some we tried to have some in continuity in the process. Um, and, and I I think despite, you know, not getting data some years or having not great comparisons, I think it, I think the process worked pretty well. It's just it's really hard to get the get the information now. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it might be worth relooking at that maybe after you know we get through this year. Yeah, yeah, um, this in just looking at the availability of the data as a as a component to you know to the process i i feel like having been here when we did the old we're getting some feedback here so i'm going to talk slowly um i feel like we were not happy when we were using just the FERCOG salary survey and in that and case, when the that finance when the committee said, hey, those towns aren't comparable, they were right. Most of the towns on there are not comparable. They're either much bigger than us. Maybe some of them are even smaller than us. Um, and it didn't really work out that an average was a very good thing there. And that's what the, um, I think if I remember right, Brian looked into towns who had um, a number of characteristics in, in common with us. And I think we did have this list we're using is a much better list. Nothing's ever going to be perfect, be but perfect. I but think it's it's a much it's a much improved over just looking at Franklin Council of Governments um, survey. And I think um, I'm real I'm disappointed that it's been so hard to get the information, and uh, that's you know that's a hard thing because. It's not like Amy's got nothing else to do, right? Um, so 
uh, that's really hard. But I uh, so we have to somehow get around that. But I, I don't want to go back to just using the FERCOG um, or the or the HCOG. I think having uh, that this more targeted list has helped us a lot. Um, and in spite of what the finance committee often says, um, this is a much better comp list than anything else. Um, we have had the problem over the years of um, equivalent positions. I think it's part of the part of the problem is that we are using really small towns, and not all of them have a water system like we do, or they don't have a building and highway superintendent, but they have a building superintendent. So those kind of things are also going to be uh, problematic to some extent. But I think we manage with that because maybe out of our ten towns, there's really only three. And we kind of knew enough about the towns to know, oh, yeah, that guy's salary is way, way high because of X, Y, Z. So using that same list of towns kind of helps us in some ways because we kind of get to know them a little bit better. And we find out kind of the the why the inconsistencies are there and we can correct for them. Um, so I... Uh, Given we still have, we have problems, we still have to do something about it. But I, I think there is some merit to using towns that have uh, things like tax base, um, population. Uh, there were I can't remember all of them, but there were like ten ish characteristics that we used, right? Yeah. So anyway, I'll let somebody else say something, and I'll put it on mute so you don't get. Is, are you getting feedback off from me now? Okay. I just didn't know if it was my computer. Um, yeah, Joyce, I agree with most of what, you know, everything you said in regards to that. You know, that's what we, we tried to respond to the finance committee by saying, okay, if you say we can't be compared to this town, so we came up with that criteria. We did what they asked. And then they go forward and then still don't like to accept the results we get from it. So um, I don't know how we address that going forward. It is definitely frustrating in my mind to see Amy or whoever that matter means for staff time to put all that time into it, obtain all that, and then just have it get tossed out because now we don't want to consider that. It's a waste of resources. So um, we definitely, and I had suggested to Brian, and like you said, maybe for next year, we need to have a bigger meeting between the personnel committee, the select board and the finance committee and, and try to come up with something that they're, they're not gonna continue to, to, to toss out. Um, another thing that's frustrating in my mind is when we get into, other things like there's been years where social security increases have been like almost nothing or or one percent and we would be asking for recommending a higher percentage and they would say well you can't we're not going to give a three percent raise this year because social security is only doing a, a one percent well now in the last couple of years social security has been doing a six percent seven percent this year they did a eight point seven i think or whatever it was and if we if we go in and say we want to match that they're they're gonna they're gonna go crazy on it so we can't they can't have it both ways i i think for the for the salary survey if if the committees are right with this i'd like to I mean, we have the we have the, we have those criteria that we used. If if I could pull those back out, um, and we can talk about those. Um, and also, I think it's probably been four or five years think, since we've looked at those. I mean, maybe maybe some of the the you know the results will change. Um, and one thing that's increased a lot, I think, in Waitley is this median household income. I think has gone up a lot. Um, and I, I just don't know, just run the, you know, just run the numbers again and see what, see what comes up. I mean, it, there's a couple towns that are chronically difficult, Hinsdale being one of them. Um, 
and West Hampton being another. Um, so even if we were, you know, even if we we found one to replace them or something like that, that maybe it would maybe it would be easier. But I I, I would like to just sort of relook at what the criteria were, and then sort of just run that uh, analysis again to see maybe it will be the same ten towns and. Um, We'll have to contact Hensdale in June after their town meeting. Um, it, the frustrating part is everybody has the data somewhere, right? Um, they do payroll every two weeks. So uh, I've even we've even got to the point of just asking for like, don't even fill out our form. Just just send us, you know, send us your 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 weight. You just send us your hourly rates, like, and we'll figure the rest out. But um, yeah, it's it's been a challenge. And it's and she spent and she spent a lot of time on it. But um, so that's all I really have to say about that. Um, you know, I, Amy will keep trying, and hopefully by the next meeting we'll have uh, at least one, if not both of those, have you know have responded. I don't know if we want to go to the point of, of a public records request, but uh, we could. Um, I don't have any friends that I'll that I'll make angry in Hinsdale. Hatfield maybe, but <laughs> but I don't know if anybody else has any it's other comments sort of, about that. I sort of feel like Hatfield, we could we could like walk in the door and ask that. I mean, it takes more time than a phone call would, but if you add up like all the phone calls it's taken, maybe just walking in the door is the best thing and have a copy of what we have already with us to to barter with i suppose <laughs> i i agree with a lot of the points that have been made and i want to um first of all i hate wasting amy's time and it's not you know it's not fair to her she's got plenty else to do uh to get this information if there's information that we can get from FERCOG and you know, for some of the municipalities, that's great. I really like the suggestion of going back and revisiting our criteria because it has been a number of years. And I fully support Keith's suggestion that we need the buy-in of the finance committee and the select board in what, what we are doing and how we are doing it. You know, the last thing we should be doing is fighting amongst ourselves after all this work is done that people disagree with the approach. So if we have a an agreed upon approach that that's worth a lot of saving time. Another uh, another thing also is the we've discussed in the past the consumer price index. You know when when the government says that the cost of living to to buy you know to stay status quo is this much more per year that's that's got to be a factor that we need to look at too yeah i completely agree that we have to take consumer price index into account and that's something else that i would want to get the finance committee and select board on board with um so it's just you know kind of a given at that point so I would yeah. I would then uh, go ahead, Brian. Well, I was just gonna say, and that's gonna say, and that's um that's really the next item on the agenda is um you know talking about and I and I like to have process in methods for you know trying to get really consistent decision, not consistent, but to have some yeah, to have some consistency over the years as to how we make decisions, right? And I don't, I don't mean, I mean the collective we, right? The town and the town boards and committees. I, I like to have, you know, a process and a methodology that's, Joyce will love this, that's based on data that that gets us consistent decisions and what I would consider defensible decisions. Um, it, like, it, it bugs me when, when decisions are, and I'm not going to get too specific here, but when decisions are made and there's, the reasoning behind them isn't that great. Um, and that's that's not a comment on the select board. Um, so it's a process of elimination. But um, 
like like I'll give an example as, as to what happened with the with the COLA last year. Um, I think the the personnel committee suggested three point seven five, and the finance committee ended up uh, recommending three. Um, and really, I think the the reasoning behind it was that one of the finance committee members made calls to unnamed officials from other communities and surveyed those other communities and you know there was some vague statement about you know nobody everybody was doing two percent or 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 nobody was going over three percent or something like that um and, and that sort of that sort of drove the that that was sort of the reasoning that that led i think mm -hmm. to that decision um whereas in my opinion the it, it may very well have been warranted to to have a to reduce it but it I would like to see that based on some sort of data or, uh, you know, the town can't quote unquote afford it. So, you know, there's some sort of financial reason for that reduction. That's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, the other thing, didn't they also say something like, well, you just picked a number that was in between these two and that, yeah. uh, you know, that's, that's like flim flammy or they didn't use the word flim flammy, but that, but they didn't they they were criticizing the process and yes. uh perhaps rightly so um we did have data on the two ends so so but right. i'm sorry i think i interrupted you and i i think you're exactly right um and that's kind of how it happened um it, it, there's this there's this mindset or this reasoning that happens is that we're just going to do whatever the other towns are doing and that's going to be good enough. Um, not really caring about why other why other towns are doing what they're doing. They may have good reasons. They may have bad reasons. Um, but it, it's our, our decisions should not be made of should not be made because you know the town next to us is doing this. The, the reasoning should be well, the town next to us is doing this, and they're doing it because of this, and that makes sense for Whaley as well. I mean, that's what I would like the discussion to be. Um, but um, it just doesn't seem to happen. Um, so, so that's, again, why I was trying to get back to sort of the, this uh, methodology or this process that, that, that we could set up, right? Because each year, if the, if, the CPI is, it, if the CPI feels like it's too high for the finance committee, then they say, oh, well, that's Boston, that's Boston, whatever the you know whatever the number whatever the the out of census tracts are or whatever they are right it's it's the boston mass new hampshire boston new and cambridge mass new hampshire you know subset or then we can look at the new england subset but that includes boston too so we can't use that or, or we look at the whole northeast but that includes you know new york and new jersey and pennsylvania and you know the rest of new england so we can't use that because it's not a good indicator we're never going to get a good indicator of exactly what it is here mm -hmm. um you know it's the same thing with job with response job responsibilities right we're never going to get a perfect match to what we have here we're never going to get a perfect cpi you know measurement for Waitley or for northampton or they don't even do it for springfield right they don't even do it for western mass i, I don't think so um specifically for western mass at least not on a on a on a monthly, you know, monthly uh, basis. So I feel like every, every year we go there and we just beat our head against the, beat our head against the beat wall against and like whatever we can say, it's never, it's never good enough. It's never perfect. It's, you know, it's just, you know, it's just difficult. Well, then I think to, to sort of wrap up this section, then it sounds like Brian, you can pull out the the criteria that we had. Look to see if you can update to see if the communities we're working with are still matching up, or if some of them have dropped off and new ones have come on. Does that sound right to you, then? Yeah, going. I, I think for the. For the next fiscal year, I think that's something that we should yes. look at. Um, right. Yeah. But again, I mean, we're not gonna. Yeah, I, I want I want a perfection and good fit where I don't think I'm gonna find them. But um, that's all right. I'll survive. 
Yeah, we can improve it. Even if we, you know, if we can't find perfection, well, we won't be alone. But if we can improve it, I think people respond to that. And maybe even our finance committee will respond to that. Okay, Brian, then we'll turn it over to you and go on to the next section to toss, talk about the personal policy update. Um, yeah, so um, before, uh, so Hannah has since left the town of Whaley. Um, I don't know who doesn't know that, but um, Hannah has moved on. Uh, she um, received a, or got a remote grant writing position for the city of Somerville, um, which paid a lot more money than we pay. But that's the small town curse, I guess. So it's, it's, it's kind of the way it is. Um, but anyways, um, we applied for a community compact grant from the state to update our personnel policy. Um, and that has been awarded. And we are going to contract with um, a firm, Human Resources Services, Inc. Um, and they are going to, uh, they do a lot of work with other municipalities on HR and uh, personnel policies and things like that. Um, so they, we are going to work with them um, to update our well outdated personnel policy. Um, so I was hoping that could involve um, some work and well, really just some review by the personnel committee, right? Because it is a personnel policy and it's, it, you know, that would be much appreciated if the, if the personnel committee could meet beyond, um, you know, the normal work that we do in budget season um, and respond to the, you know, the information and edits that we get from our, from our consultant. I think that's reasonable. If I understand, I mean, tell you, tell me if I've got the oversimplified process down to oversimplified, but we're going to hand them, meaning you're going to hand them a stack of our policies, maybe on a hard drive or something, but um, they're going to go through them. They're going to make some suggestions. They're going to hand it back to us. We're going to look at them. And maybe they'll be at our meeting and helping walk us through them, or maybe not. Um, and then we have to decide, um, do we want to accept these new policies? Was there something they didn't understand? Maybe they'll, you know, maybe there needs to be a little back and forth. And then at the end, we get a brand new shiny stack of PDFs with new policies. And... Um, and it's going to, the, the work for us is really um, kind of looking at, well, what we have compared to what they suggest and kind of, I don't want to say see if we like it, right? <laughs> uh, understand the reasons for the changes uh, and, you know, approve those if we are so inclined to do that and maybe... Um, Along the way, we learn something as well about why these changes are important and necessary. Does that seem like the, so it's gonna be a couple of meetings probably. I don't know if we can do every personnel policy in one meeting, is that, I don't know how big the stack is. I would anticipate that it would be, at, at, I would say a minimum of three meetings, maybe two, but I would say a minimum okay. of three. Two to three um, meetings then. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that sort of the, you know, I, I think we have the basics in there, but I, it definitely has been updated in a while. So any of, I don't think we have a lot of the, of the, yeah. you know, the new changes in the law that have happened in the past, maybe 20 years. Um, yeah. In terms of language and, you know, obviously we want to amend language and stuff like that. that yeah. has what um, time period might this happen? Is this going to happen over the summer? Do you think, or is it going to happen sooner? Um, I believe most of it will happen late spring, summer, I would, I think. Okay. Yep. They were pretty busy through, I think through March. So. Okay. I, for one, I, for one, oh, now we're getting the feedback. Sorry. I, um, support doing this. I think 
of having professionals take a look at this because we've talked about going through them, but it's just too much for us to do. Happy to participate in a few meetings to review them. I have to ask the question, um, Human Resources Services Inc., are they the best partner for this, not knowing them or anybody else? Um, we want to make sure we have somebody who we can work well with. Yeah, I'm I'm fairly confident they that they can do the work. The other the other um, group that a lot of towns use is is the the Collins Center from UMass Boston, and they actually did some work five years ago, maybe. Um, and we were not very impressed with what we got back. Um, this was the old. You don't even have time to change the town of new into town of Waitley type stuff. It was canceled meetings, just boilerplate stuff taken from previous work. And it it was just a bad experience in my opinion. So um, I remember that, which is why I'm asking the question, just to make yeah. sure it's not the same people we use that time. It is, it is not. Okay, then the the next item on the agenda, unanticipated items. Um, is there any other comments from anybody else? Some of the other members or people present in the meeting, do you have anything? All right, if not, Brian, do you have anything more? Um, I just I just wanted to circle back to um in terms of the cola oh yeah um what i mean we typically look at and like we can provide the data for social security we can look at cpi for northeast i mean it's all there right the, the different regions that they have northeast new england boston cambridge nash i think it might be nashua or, or concord yeah. or, or whatever but um we can have the data we we can we can ask around for um, you know, the, the, the challenge with asking other towns is everybody's going through the process at the same time and, and not a lot of, every, and everybody's deciding at the same time. The other challenge is, um, and it, it's not really a challenge, but it's just something to keep in mind that, that some towns are on a step system. Um, yeah. so what they choose for a cola it, it, you may be taking into consideration you know that there is a step system like deerfield anyways that goes back to the finance committee meetings last year where we were quoting where people were quoting colon numbers that it, people weren't really well informed on um so anyways um we can try to gather those we can we can, we know what FERCOG is doing but it just feels like we're just sort of going to do what we did last year i guess <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how else to to I don't know what other like what other data yeah. could we possibly get to help inform it better. I would be um I would be okay if we kind of look at the whole year. Um I know I guess the uh, the information we get for on the consumer price index is year over year and then it's compiled each month. But I would even want to go back. Uh, and look at you know last year it was six percent and we only gave people three percent and and that should be part of our should be part of our thinking um and it may be that it's it's lower this year or maybe it's going to still be six percent <laughs> um and maybe that's when we need to start arguing that hey we need to do this and this is what we as a personnel committee are recommending and Finance committee may go and cut that in half, but at least we're going in with a, a number that's defensible and with reasons behind it. Um, I, I don't know what the data looks like at this point, um, but I'm guessing it's not that different from what we'd be looking at this time last year. It is, well, the Northeast is 6.1 for the CPI for the 12 yeah. months since December. Yeah. Um, I think New England is a little bit lower, it's somewhere in the fives, I think. Yeah. And uh, and that's kind of where we were this time last year, right? It was, you know, six plus or minus 0. 0.2 or something like that. 
in that range for the couple of months that we were looking at it. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we'll gather all that, all that information as well. And we'll, but I, I, I think you're right, Joyce. I mean, just coming up with a defensible decision, which, whichever way is probably the most important thing. Yeah, and and I, I think part of our reasoning last year was, oh, the finance committee is never going to go for that, so let's lower it, and maybe we should put it on them. Right, this is what we think people deserve and here's our reasons why and you know they 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 could call us crazy but that would be unprofessional they would never be unprofessional um but uh you know that's that know probably better a strategy than than going in making the compromise before we can get there I like that thinking. All right. So, do we want to? Yeah, will, uh, uh, can I just can I just add one more thing about? And I, I just want people on the personnel committee to, to be aware that that these things were said. It was, uh, I mean, last year I I felt that the personnel committee was attacked in terms of the composition of the personnel oh, committee. Yeah. yeah. Um. And the personnel committee is what's what how it's designated in the in the you know in the in the personnel policy essentially but um you know there was there were comments made about you know uh, essentially potential conflicts of interest and in self-serving votes and things like that that i thought was probably a little bit out of line um so i just wanted to put that on the table that 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 was also said because it's public record so um mm. the finance committee had talked with the select board a little bit about it um but i don't i don't think that at the time the select board was interested in in revisiting yeah you know revisiting yeah i don't remember that being like at one of our meetings but this um stuff kind of came up um in you know an email from somebody you know saying that no other town has this sort of thing and and i thought your response to that email was really um was real well it was really professional which of course because brian wrote it um but mm -hmm. explaining that this is a by this is a bylaw and if you want to change the bylaw there's a way to change it uh and there's a reason for why the bylaw is there so that's um yeah all right so it looks like then we're at the point of discussing our next meeting Yeah. So um, are we looking at um, a meeting that's in something like two weeks or in four weeks? What are we looking at? I'm hopeful that Amy can can track the that other you know that other information down fairly quickly even if it means driving down the half field <laughs> yeah don't to drive to hinsdale i don't know if, i don't know if that's worth it but <laughs> yeah so <laughs> Hi there. We're just figuring out the next meeting time, and then we'll be done. So it's th I think the six might Hi. be. If looking at a Monday, I think the six is too soon. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not available the thirteenth, um, but it, obviously the personnel committee could meet. Um, yeah. Right. <laughs> no, we would. <laughs> we wouldn't want to meet without you, Brian. We wouldn't get very far. Yeah, we would. We will be much better organized. What about the twentieth then? I um, could do the twentieth. Yeah. I myself, I'm actually. Um, uh, I have a, a class meeting that goes till five twenty. I forgot that they did this shift in the time on our classes on Mondays, 
So um, I could, it's hard for me to start at five o'clock, but I could start at 5.30 very easily if um, if that's okay. Or later, if other people are, are thinking that's, yeah. On I just- the 20th, uh, On the 20th, I have a five o'clock historical commission meeting. Um, so if we could do six or seven, depending yeah. on if people wanted to, oh, you know, if we're involved in our... It's a holiday, but I'm okay with that. If Brian's okay with that. Oh, the 20th is a holiday. Are we allowed to uh, do public meetings on a holiday? They're discouraged. They're, that is, I thought, discouraged as well. Yeah. Does it have to be a Monday? No. Uh, Tuesdays are very busy with selectmen and finance committee yep. and every other week. So Tuesdays um, would not be very good. Um, but if, what if we look at that previous week? Uh, um, oh, the previous week. Right. Uh, the beginning of the week, Brian is out. Selectmen are on that Thursday. Uh, I don't know if the Wednesday looks good for anybody. Um, that would be Wednesday the 15th. Wednesday the 15th is okay for me. Yeah. Okay with me. Me too. Okay. And we should sort out a time for that. Um, I assume we'll still be by Zoom at that point, although we could be uh, some in person. Um, do we, I mean, do we like this earlier time or are we willing to go to a somewhat later time? There is a, a talk at five o'clock here that I don't have to go to. Um, so if we needed to meet on the earlier side, I could either bug out early or so, do something like that. Doesn't matter to me. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. Can we do six thirty? Six thirty then. Six thirty and Zoom. Okay. Sure. All right, then. That completes the items on the agenda, um, unless. Brian, you had anything else or you're good? All right. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Do we do a roll call vote on this also since we're on Zoom? So I will start with Susan. Yes. Betty. Yes. Joyce. Yes. And myself. Yes. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Hey, good night, everybody.